Saint Basil the Great, among the other Cappadocian fathers, <coughs> was at one time engaged in a great conflict with a heresy of his day. They were described as, I believe it was the, the Eunomians. And this was a heresy earlier on. There had been the Arian teaching that the Son was created and not begotten of the Father. But then later on they said, well, even if he is, and even if he knows the essence of the Father, why is that a big deal? Because anyone knows the essence of the Father. Anyone can know. And the Cappadocian father said, are you crazy? How could anyone know the essence of God? And for the son to know the essence of God means that he's of the same essence with the father. And St. Basil spent a lot of time speaking, giving many different examples of how we don't even know ourselves. We don't even know a flower in all of its depths. And yet these men were claiming to know the essence of divinity and be able to define it and capture it in their words. And the Orthodox Church soundly, completely rejected this teaching. But one of the things that they would ask St. Basil is, well, if you're saying you don't know the essence of God, then how do you know God at all? What is it that you know? And this is when St. Basil, one of the earliest um, earliest fathers to really express the fundamental teaching of the Orthodox faith, began to speak about the difference between the essence of God and his activities and how we know him because of what he does. We know him as he reveals himself to us. And what does that mean? It means that we know his power, we know his grace, we know his goodness, we know his loving kindness. We know all of these different things because these are activities of God that are revealed to us. And that's what we see today in the Gospel reading, in the Gospel of Matthew. The Son of God is revealed as God, the one who walks on the waves of the sea. This is something the Psalms speak about, how his footsteps are in the path of the sea. The Lord Almighty walking on the waters. And so Jesus Christ, the Son of God incarnate, is revealed as equal and consubstantial with the Father, as the perfect image of his Father incarnate. This is good news for us. Because we know, again from this account in Matthew, that the Lord in demonstrating his power, and demonstrating who he is, what does he do with that power and that grace? What does he do with it? He keeps us from drowning. He keeps us from totally sinking into the waters. He uses all of this power and this authority and this might in order to save humanity, in order to raise up broken souls. And especially to hold us when we step out in faith and find that we ourselves, in trying to pursue Him, are beginning to sink. And I can tell you, I think probably at this point in my ministry, I have never before experienced the degree to which I feel as if myself, as well as our parish community, are stepping out onto the waters stepping out onto the waters and not knowing 
not being certain about whether those waters will support us or whether we'll start to sink. But the Lord says, and remember, he says to the disciples, he says, it is I. Or in another way that that would be translated from the Greek, he would say, I am. Do not fear. Again, pointing to his divinity. And so when the disciples step out, and when Peter looks at him and he says, if it is you, if you are, bid me to come to you on the water. And he steps out. But then, of course, he begins to sink. Why? And I watch this happen over and over again. I watch it happen on the parish council. I watch it happen amongst the leadership of the parish. We take our eyes off of the Lord. We start looking at other things. We take our eyes off of the gospel. We are commanded by the Lord himself to go into the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that he commanded us. This is our mission as the Orthodox Church. There is no other. Period. As soon as we take our eyes off of that, we fall. We begin to sink. As soon as we start being concerned about which wealthy benefactor has enough, about who is going to support us, about all of these different things. We take our eyes off the Lord and begin to sink. I watch it happen over and over and over again. I see the confusion that ensues. I see the loss of purpose. And I see us begin to sink. Again and again and again. But the good news, the immense good news, Peter begins to sink, and what does he do? He just says, Lord, save me. Does the Lord turn away from him? Does the Lord not stretch out his hand? Does he not have compassion on him? Does he say, well, you took your eyes off of me. It's right for you to sink. It's just that you sink. If God were to fulfill his justice, this entire parish would be disbanded and lost. All of us. And yet he doesn't. He sees us beginning to sink, and as soon as we cry out, Lord, save me, he is there to grab our hand and to lift us up. This is great, immensely good news for us. And again, if it is for us, it is for the entire world. Amen. It is for everyone in this entire city. It is for all of them to know that the Lord is there. Several weeks ago, at a local business, for many of us, several a few months ago, for many of our parishioners are employed and deeply involved, there was a young man who was sitting on the front steps and he pulled out a gun and he turned to the person sitting beside him. He said, no one loves me. And he shot himself in the face. The reality of depression is immense and awful. And that young man did have people in his life that deeply loved him. And many people do, and when they're depressed, they can't see it. But I want us to dream so big and to have such a heart for our community that there would not be a single person in this city that would ever say, no one loves me. That they would know that the living God loves them. That our Lord Jesus Christ loves them. That he is there to grab their hand when they start to sink. That he has compassion on them that he desires that all would be saved and that none would perish. 
that all of us would turn from the error of our ways and abide in his truth, abide in his commandments, which are life for the world. And I don't think that this is beyond our reach. When you look at the disciples, at the apostles, empowered by the Holy Spirit, there were just 12 of them. And the song verse that we always sing that's associated with their feast days is their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the ends of the universe. Their voice is spread everywhere. The words of salvation, the words that Jesus Christ incarnate, the living God, was crucified for us, rose for us, ascended into heaven for us, is seated at the right hand of the Father for us, sent the Holy Spirit for us, so that we would be raised to new and everlasting life in His name. And so may we continue to proclaim the gospel, continue to grow as a parish, and continue to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord our Savior and follow Him and spread the word the good news, the blessing of His commandments throughout the entire region to everyone we meet. Amen. Amen. Amen.